Thank you, Senator Ossoff. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Monaco, welcome. Thank you. Uh, you have a very important job. You're the number two person in the Department of Justice. Every U.S. attorney reports to you. The U.S. Marshals report to you. You are responsible for day-to-day -day operations of the Department of Justice, and in particular, the criminal justice aspects of the Department of Justice. Is all of that correct? That's correct. It is unfortunate, Ms. Monaco, that as you look back over the last two and a half years, this Department of Justice, I believe, has been the most partisan Department of Justice we've ever seen. And that is directly contrary to the mission of DOJ. DOJ is meant to be nonpartisan. It is meant to enforce the law, regardless of party. I had hopes that Merrick Garland would actually do that when he was confirmed. Those hopes have been shattered. You have been a loyal deputy standing alongside that partisan corruption of Department of Justice. You have been willing to devote massive resources to targeting individuals that are perceived to be political opponents of the White House. And you have been willing to devote zero resources to protecting individuals who are perceived to be political opponents of the White House. I want to ask you about a statute you've been asked about already, 18 U.S.C. 1507. You're familiar with this statute? Yes. It's a criminal statute that says whoever with the intent of influencing any judge pickets or parades in or near a building or residences occupied or used by such judge shall be fined or imprisoned under this title or imprisoned not more than one year or both. Now, the entire country has seen hundreds of protesters outside the homes of Supreme Court justices night after night after night. You turn on your TV and you see violations of this criminal statute over and over and over again. How many prosecutions has DOJ brought under 18 U.S.C. Section 1507 under your leadership? There have not been no prosecutions under 1507. We're pursuing an attempted murder case against an individual Zero who is the answer. Justice Kavanaugh. I'm quite aware, and, and you're responsible for that, allowing these protests night after night after night the violent threat of homicide of the individual who traveled across the country attempting to murder a Supreme Court justice, that was fueled by DOJ refusing to enforce this statute. Now, it's not an accident that DOJ refused to enforce this statute. The U.S. Marshals put up, gave a presentation. The General Counsel's Office of the U.S. Marshals, if you look at one of the pages, from that presentation. The general counsel's office stated the goals of the residential and personal protection mission. Keep SCOTUS justices and their family free from physical harm. Do not interfere with lawful First Amendment protected activity. Avoid, unless absolutely necessary, criminal enforcement actions involving the protester protesters, particularly on public space, and making arrests and initi initiating prosecutions is not the goal of the presidents, of the marshal's presence at SCOTUS residences. Are you familiar with this presentation? I am. I'm familiar with the fact that the U.S. Marshal Service Director has been explicit, has been clear that the Attorney General has repeatedly directed him to enforce all federal laws, including 1507, and that his number one priority, and that of his many deputies assigned to a 24-7 security presence, is to protect the life, the safety, the property of the justices. Did, and did you their or anyone family. from the DAG's office meet with the U.S. Marshal Service and discuss Section 1507? I regularly meet with uh, the director of the Marshal Service, the and, Attorney General. And have you General, discussed 1507? The, I discussed the uh, the Attorney General has been quite clear, and I have been quite clear with the director of the Marshal Service. The Are Attorney you familiar General's, with this presentation? I've seen those slides, if they're the ones that uh, Senator Britt presented to the Attorney General. Um, but I want to be quite clear, Senator, about um, the direction given to the Marshal Service through the director of the Marshal Service. He has been clear that the Attorney General directed him repeatedly to enforce all federal laws to With make respect, his Ms. number Monaco, one that, priority. That is demonstrably false because this is written 
instruction, making arrests and initiating prosecution is not the goal. That's not an instruction to enforce the law. That is exactly the opposite. It is 180 degrees. It is instructing them. It is not the goal to arrest anybody, despite the fact that the criminal statute said they shall be imprisoned. You made a political decision. Merrick Garland made a political decision that because you agree with the protesters, you don't like the decision the Supreme Court justices made, the marshals were instructed, don't arrest anyone and don't enforce federal law. Isn't that correct? It is not correct because the attorney general and I and the marshal service director are so concerned about potential threats to the justices. The attorney general directed in an unprecedented step, 24-7. Not what this says in writing. 24-7. What does this say in writing? I don't have the right glasses on for that, but Senator... The Attorney General was very clear with the Director of the Marshal Service, and the Marshal Service Director has said the same thing. The word that not the is number, even underlined. The number one priority given to the Marshal Service for their unprecedented protection detail for the Supreme Court justices is to protect their life, their but safety, to and ignore their 1507. Property, to protect their life, their to safety. To ignore federal criminal law. Respectfully disagree with that characterization. That's what sir. the written instruction says. Not is underlined. Do not make arrests. Do not initiate prosecutions. Up is not down. The director of the Marshal Service has been very clear. The attorney general directed him to enforce all federal laws, but that his number one priority is to ensure the safety Ms. Monica, and the protection. Ms. Monica, what you're saying is objectively false. The time of the senator has expired. Uh, there are no f further members to ask in the five-minute round, and we're going to conclude the hearing. I want to thank the Deputy Attorney General for being present. I would like to make a couple points as chair. Uh, first, the safety and security of all, including elected officials, is the highest priority. There is never an excuse for violence nor destruction of property in the pursuit of any perceived constitutional right. I think that it should be agreed on by everyone here. We have passed legislation in this committee specifically to protect federal judges and their families. The reason is there have been some horrible tragedies. One occurred in Chicago, another one occurred in New Jersey, and led us to put new, uh, establish new standards in place for the protection of the men and women who serve in the judiciary. Uh, I might say that the one bill that we passed from the committee and sent to the floor the Anderl Judicial Security and Privacy Act was held up on the floor for almost a year by the junior senator from Kentucky. One year when protection should have been issued, it was not because of one senator's decision. But finally, it was allowed to move forward and it now is the law. And I'm sure, I hope, I can say that we're doing everything we can to enforce it. Let me also say that it is interesting to listen to the debate about exercise of First Amendment rights. It appears that when the Department of Justice issued a memorandum relative to school board meetings and safety at those meetings, it became extremely controversial because some said it was in, in dampening or hindering parents uh, to express themselves at school board meetings if they disagreed with school policy. I read it to protect the members of the school board who in my state and others have been threatened with their lives intimidated to the point where they resigned from the school boards because of the uh, coercion that was being extended toward them. Also, I can't understand this theory that what happened in the Capitol building on January 6th was so innocent. It was far from innocent. I believe some 800 have been prosecuted. Does the deputy know the number? Over 1,000, Senator. Over 1,000 have been prosecuted. Charges nope. brought, excuse me, Chairman, over a thousand charges brought. Over a thousand charges brought. It is hard to imagine that anyone could keep a straight face and say they stepped in through a broken window for a sightseeing tour of the Capitol. That uh, is incredible. What happened that day, 150 members of law enforcement were assaulted, some very seriously suffering injuries they're still trying to recover from. And there was also the reality that a number of people died as a result of that insurrection. The fact that it happened January 6th was no coincidence. January 6th, 2021, if I'm not mistaken, I know I'm not mistaken, 
was the day chosen when we counted electoral votes to establish who would be the President of the United States. There was an effort by those who denied the results of that election to question it, its results, uh, and I can tell you that that was even witnessed yesterday uh, by the uh, compromise or settlement that resulted in Fox News paying close to $800 million as a, as a fine to uh, a Dominion Corporation that manufactures elect election machinery on the premise that there were misstatements made on the air about what happened that day. I hope that this has been brought to rest, this whole question of the legitimacy of the election in 2020, but it still is being played out. I'd like to say a word, if I can, about Section 702. Section 702 is a device or procedure used by our government to keep us safe. I believe that is the premise of it, to make sure that if we suspect that someone overseas wishes us ill or is going to do something in a negative way, we learn that ahead of time and stop it from happening. That is a noble and proper goal for it to pursue. The reality is, though, in the process of uh, intercepting messages from foreigners, we often involve Americans in the same conversation, millions of them. And the question is, are they losing, are those Americans losing their constitutional rights for due process by the 702 pr procedure? I have voted against 702 consistently in the past, but I have been assured there will be efforts made by this administration to put in safeguards so that innocent civilians uh, will be protected from losing their constitutional rights in this process. Uh, I hope we can work together on that uh, goal ultimately to be achieved. So there are many issues before us. I thank you for your patience. M Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you, you have taken a second round of questioning. No, I, I wasn't I would a ask second for round one. of question. That was the chairman's statement. Uh, well, you also asked questions, and, and you offered a moment ago an opportunity for a second round. Oh, I, I would certainly no, I appreciate that. I did not offer uh, for a second okay, round. Okay, so your rules are you get a second round of questioning and no one else does? No, the rules are you don't make them up. I'm the chairman. You make them up. I appreciate the Deputy Attorney General appearing before the committee. You're continuing your pattern, Mr. Chairman. Hello.